today's video is a little bit different than normal. Um, I'm going to talk about coincidences and uh, certain things that I observe or appreciate, I should say. Things that keep me entertained. So there's not a lot to do while we're on lockdown. And um, I noticed today uh, a coincidence which is probably not something everyone would notice. But uh, nevertheless, it's something I do, <laughs> so I thought I'd share this one. Um, it involves the International Space Station. Now, we're not going to see it today because the observation I want to sort of record is in the middle of the day. Now, that's the whole point, really. Um, so I quite like spotting coincidences or symmetries, you know, just things in nature, things that you might not normally notice. Just strange things or just, like I say, mathematical coincidences, symmetries and things like that. So the International Space Station is the um, topic today. And I noticed this morning that it's due to pass overhead where I live in the UK um, at about three minutes past one. And that's about six minutes um, to the side of when the sun passes overhead at its highest point. So six minutes is, is nothing. To me, that's pretty much the sun's transiting at its most southerly point at exactly the same time that the, the International Space Station goes over at its highest point. Now, when I say highest point, um, I literally mean the highest point it will ever go over this part of the UK. It goes over every day, um, but the coincidence really is today that it goes over at its highest point right in the middle of the sun's highest point by six minutes which is not bad about three sun widths away from its furthest its, its center point its transit so that's good enough for me and uh, i find that quite interesting to be honest and it's not going to happen very often and even if it was i'd probably be at work i wouldn't have this opportunity to appreciate it and just mark it basically so that's what i'm going to explain and show you today i've got various apps which uh, allow me to see it going over in real time, plus you can predict where it's going to be, which is why I've found out where it's going to be and when. Um, so we'll see how this goes. You'll have to excuse the mess in the background. This is a lot of junk I've cleared out of my garage since I've been in lockdown. Getting all these sort of jobs done. That's what you got to do, that's what you got to do. But it's not the most attractive backdrop for the video, is it? So a little bit about um, the International Space Station, exactly where it's going to be and why. So when the International Space Station was launched, it was, it was, it was launched in the direction of the Earth's rotation at a slight angle to the equator. So it doesn't go exactly around the middle. It goes slightly north or slightly south. So it goes at an angle to that and that's about 51 degrees apogee. So where I am in the UK, it's about 53 degrees. So the International Space Station will never ever go exactly overhead. It'll go nearly overhead, and that's that's today. So that's the, the, if you mapped uh, the route of the orbit of the International Space Station, it's like a sine wave because it's going round the globe. It's going round. It's a circle round the sphere, basically. So if you looked at it on a Mercator map, you'd see that that trend. So the top of that arc, the very crest of it, just so happens to go over dead south to where I am. At 51 degrees north in this part of the northwest of the UK um, and again the coincidence here is that it just so happens when it does that to the minute almost to the minute the Sun is exactly south so to me that's fascinating and it's just a, a coincidence that you wouldn't normally notice and even if you did you might be too late you might have missed it so I've got various apps that will show you that um, and that's what we'll that's what we'll look at so looking at my view this is south for me, so that house there with a diamond on it, not sure if you can see it, that there, that's exactly south. And the sun's currently uh, currently here today, it's about, uh, what time is it now? 12.34, so it's about half an hour, that's about half an hour off dead south. So we've got about half an hour to go before the International Space Station rises, about five minutes before it reaches its apogee and it will be above the sun and then it'll go right over there. So this is west, 
rising as high as it will ever get for me two degrees above well two degrees off center then it'll go and set in the east again we're never going to see it but i'll use an app to track that for you and show you but that should be pretty cool like i say the coincidence here is the fact it transits the sun transits at exactly the same time the international space station is the highest it will ever be We've got great weather in the UK at the minute. It's quite warm today and it's sunny. So this is, again, another good reason to kind of see that situation. Um, open skies to the UK. They'll get an even better view looking down, I'm sure, if they did. <laughs> today would be a good day to photograph the UK from space, put it that way. But it should be pretty good. I'm gonna get comfortable and sit down. It's a bit breezy today, but that was obviously what affect the space station. 44 so we've got about uh, 18 minutes but uh, probably in about 10 minutes it'll actually rise above the horizon here so again I won't be able to see it uh, with the naked eye and show you that but I'll use an app to show where it is uh, but I still think that's cool I still think that's a cool thing to see and observe basically that that's happening um, and like I say it goes over every day but never never this high and even if it did, it could have been the morning, the afternoon, but it just so happens it's doing it within six minutes of the sun being perfectly south, um, as hot and bright as it will get. So again, if you wanted to be on the space station and photograph the UK today, uh, the next half an hour would be the time to do it, I think. Maybe they do, maybe they know that themselves and they do that. I doubt it. <laughs> I think the cat's coming to watch as well. Are you coming, Bo? Hey? You gonna watch it with me? She's not interested. Why? Why? It's amazing. Right, let's have a look. It's just about to come above the horizon, so I'll show you what we can see. There it is. Look at that just to the left of west perfect timing if it was night time you'd see it obviously but that there is the international space station and that will come fairly high right over the top of the sun so I'll try my best to keep it still but that's moving at 17 and a half thousand miles an hour hopefully you can hear me it's a bit windy Thank you. I'll turn the background off and show the real the real camera's view. Once it gets a bit higher up. There we have it. There it gives you a better indication of the speed it's going. to get faster the higher it gets the nearer to as it is that's it takes about five minutes from when it comes above the horizon to when it gets to Apogee and then another five minutes to get to the other side today that is it's traveling its furthest distance across the sky from where I am so it takes the longest
all the different uh, constellations that are visible at the moment. We don't want that. Now there you go. That shows you the track and you can see how steep uh, from the horizon the curve is. There it is. And it's way over as predicted above the sun. Put the camera on now. highest point with the sun being at the highest point. Round about now. two degrees um, off centre from directly above my head when it was above the sun anyway see the trajectory of its orbit as it goes towards the east. Right across the sky. It's going to disappear behind that chimney, behind that uh, cottage over there. about now is when the sun's actually transiting. As you can see the sun's directly above that house. Yeah. Very clear of you. Can 
see we're just tracking it until it goes right down. Again, just like the predictions on the uh, the software and the apps that uh, I showed you. As you can see from this view. It's now over Germany, so if you're in Germany, it'd be overhead just like it was for me five minutes earlier. And that red line on the left indicates that it's still above the horizon for me, even though I can't see it now. And it actually shows you where it physically flew overhead. So as you can see, flew over Pembrokeshire in Wales from east, right across Bristol area across Oxfordshire and right across the top of London and then out over the Netherlands now from the far left of the UK mainland to the far right that took about 70 seconds so again 17 and a half thousand miles an hour it's pretty quick and that will be back round again if we fast forward time, it'll go over again, but not quite as good. At about 2.41. So at its closest point, it was 280 miles from me when it was at uh, exactly south over the sun. And it was 264 miles above the earth, doing 17,144 miles an hour. Pretty cool. So next time I'll do a video where we can actually see the ISS um, in the sky itself without just uh, the use of the app. So a time like this, um, you know, about half an hour after sunset is perfect because uh, the ISS would be high enough to still be in the sun, but the sky is still dark enough down here so we can see it against the black, darker background, just like Venus. At the moment, if you can see Venus, just above that chimney, nice big bright point in the sky. So the ISS would be something similar to that. So the sun shines on it, it's reflective, we can see it from the ground and again it'll be coming from west to east. So I'll do the next video that shows the same thing but with the actual ISS in the sky. Feel a bit half cut now. <laughs> <laughs>